Yo, what the hell is going on, Xbox and PC fans? It is your boy Josh, bringing you guys some much heated controversy today. So, let's talk. NVIDIA has just released their brand spanking new Pascal based GPU, the GTX 1080. This GPU represents the top of NVIDIA's consumer GPUs and it has taken the crown as the current undisputed king of single GPU performance. But waiting in the wings is little bro, the GTX 1070. Will this GPU be a new champion for the people? Will it truly give consumers the best price to performance ratio? Or are the changing tides of the market making the waters a little bit murky? The choices not so clear. Well. Today we look back to the old champ, the GTX 980 Ti, to find out the real story. With the imminent release of the 1070 just a few days away, on June the 10th, there is little denying it presents some compelling new technology and features over the 980 Ti. To start, the 1070 consumes a full 100 watts less power at idle. It will allegedly output less heat. It has enhanced support for multi-monitor and VR gaming. It also supports 4K HDR and DisplayPort 1.4. It has 8GB of VRAM as opposed to 6. And presumably, these cards will scale better in SLI, especially at higher resolutions. It also includes some additional codecs for audio and video decoding. But what about performance? That's right, what about sheer gaming performance today on a monitor with a single GPU? We're not here to look at theoretical numbers or possible optimizations, or some crazy scenario down the road, but rather, let's look at what we can get out of these two GPUs for gaming on a monitor with no SLI right now, today. Let's go. Now everything you see here will be linked below, so feel free to go nuts and open more than one tab in your browser. <laughs> so there's this guy named Matt. Say hi, Matt. Matt was a little channel on YouTube that's roughly a million times more popular than my little operation here. And this guy is legitimately awesome. I'd highly recommend you check this guy out in his channel. Uh, he's one of the few YouTubers that has current and accurate benchmarks up for both the 1080 and the 1070 at both reference and overclock speeds. So, really awesome job this guy does. And a lot of his charts I'm going to pull up here. So, uh, sorry to blatantly rip your ass off here, Matt. But uh, I need you, brother. So, here goes nothing. Uh, first off, let's take a look at the setup and drivers he's using to get these numbers that he's getting on these benchmarks. He's got a, uh, an Intel 6700K with some DDR4 and the latest drivers as of his recording. So, pretty good stuff. Next up, we can see the clocks he's been able to achieve with overclocking here. Keep in mind that these numbers are brought to you using all reference cards. I repeat, all reference cards. So none of these cards are from add-in board partners for the 980Ti's or the 1070's. These are all reference cards to be completely clear. So to start off, we can see the two cards trade blows at their stock speeds with neither card really pulling ahead of the other. What we do see is that when push comes to shove, it's the Maxwell Base 980Ti that ends up being the better overclocker, reaching ever so close to the new king even, the GTX 1080. With the 980 Ti and other Maxwell-based GPU getting upwards of 20 to 25 percent gains via overclocking, all of the previous generation cards are able to make up some room between them and the Pascal-based boards. We see that on the whole, the 980 Ti winds up being even faster than the new kid on the block, the GTX 1070, by about 10 percent leaving it somewhere in between the 1070 and the GTX 1080. Here we see a confirmation of these results by another site called Pure PC. Keeping in mind that the results from Hardware Unboxed were all based on reference designs. These benchmarks, however, include more modest overclocks on non-reference hardware. Still, it is undeniably clear that the 980 Ti is getting more bang for the buck after overclocking and pulls out a definitive victory here in pure gaming performance. With these cards going as low as $400 on eBay and the Founders Edition 1070 is coming in at $450, it does make a decision a little bit more tricky. Do you sacrifice performance today to gain some features that you might use in the future? Do you risk buying a GPU on the used market? And what does the future hold for the GTX 1070? Will add-in board partners be able to push this card back up to 980 Ti levels of performance? 
by way of some truly massive factory overclocks? In my opinion, I don't believe so. However, many people out there would have you believe that NVIDIA will make this happen. That through their own driver updates, they will be nerfing the 9 series cards intentionally, forcing the masses to upgrade to their latest and greatest by sheer virtue of software gimping. Well, next time, we take a look at the possibility. Is there any proof this happened in the past? Is NVIDIA going to gimp performance on the 980 Ti and the other 9 series cards going forward? Find out next time on XBNPC, and in the meantime, leave your thoughts and comments below. How do you feel about this? If given the choice between a potentially better performer in the 980 Ti today, or the new 1070 with its future-proofing features, which would you choose? If you get a chance, rate, comment, share, subscribe. Appreciate you guys a whole hell of a lot, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.